Hey everybody, welcome to Matt's Metal Show! <clears throat> Good morning. Oh shit. Well, oh, anyways. What do we got to talk about today? <laughs> um, first things first. Uh, 40th anniversary of fucking moving pictures. Just got that yesterday or the day before. The deluxe edition had us like a live. It's a live show from Toronto from March 25th, 1981. It is fucking awesome. Yeah. If, if I mean, like, the remaster of the album, we all know, like, I fucking love moving pictures. It's my favorite fucking Rush album ever. Um, so the remaster's from, like, 2015. Like, they're, they're not, it's like, fuck, dude, it's been remastered. <laughs> so I, I don't know how much further you could go, you know. But the uh, live show, it's, uh... <sighs> Fucking amazing. Let's see what it had on there. Like I said, it's from uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. Opens with like 2112. Goes into Free Will, Limelight, Cygnus X1, Book 2, Hemispheres, which is weird because they kind of break that up like a couple different places. Uh, beneath, between, and behind the camera eye. Fucking live, right? From 1981. YYZ. Right? That's what this live show is called. Live in YYZ. YYZ is the airport code for Toronto. And uh, it's fucking awesome. That's Neil's drum solo, too. Uh, it's got Bruins Bane, which goes into the trees. It's got fucking Xanadu. Spirit of Radio, Red Barchetta, Close to the Heart, Tom Sawyer, Vital Signs, Natural Science. It's got this fucking medley with a bunch of stuff like Working Man and a little bit of Cygnus, like some I'm in the mood, right? And then they end with La Via Strangiano. This fucking live out. Now, I get the fucking remasters because I love Rush and I love getting like a, a whole show. I was a little disappointed in the fucking live show from Hemispheres because it was just like the Pink Pop Festival. It was like a radio broadcast. And it was kind of lame. Um, there's actually more Hemispheres on the other tours that they've put out than actually on the Hemispheres fucking 40th anniversary. I think they do Hemispheres for like, like less than a minute. <laughs> Weird, right? Um, there's a fucking Tucson show that they could have fucking put on there. That one seemed kind of like a rip. Because it was like, that live show was it. I mean, we're just, I'm just getting these because I want the live shows. But I'll tell you, like, the live show from Permanent Waves was kind of chopped up between Manchester and the, the London Hammersmith Odeon show. Um, still cool, but it would have been cool to have one continuous show. I kind of like that just having the whole show um, kind of feels a little bit more like, you know, you're in attendance. This show, though, from Toronto, it's complete. It's got Getty talking. It's fucking it's 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 one of the only live shows that I've ever heard where where Neil keeps going at the end of the song. Um and, you know, if you ever listen to a lot of the albums, most of the time they cut that out, but um, sometimes the drummers would give that little little extra right at the end of the song. Um, I never heard Neil fucking do that before. Neil was always so precise. <laughs> um, but it's on there, and it's fucking amazing. Uh, this is such a fucking good live show. Um, the live show from like a Farewell to Kings was Hammersmith Odeon. Uh, you got a little peek of it on the counterparts where they put an extra disc. And then for the, uh, 40th anniversary of, uh, Farewell to Kings, you know, they added on all the stuff that was missing. Um, 
this is a fucking... I, I can't wait for fucking signals. I really can't. <laughs> I cannot wait for signals. Uh, I was waiting for this one. I was waiting for the uh, Permanent Waves one, too. Um, they're great, man. Uh, it's a fucking... It's great. It's got all this little fucking extra stuff. Bullshit. I don't really care about that. Um, it's just another thing to, like, put up on the shelf. <laughs> Um, I just care about the music, so moving pictures, 40th anniversary. Oh, so fucking good. So fucking good. Um, what else are we going to talk about? I was going to go over some albums that kind of skipped in the last couple of weeks. I want to talk about, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about, oh, let's go back a little bit. Do, do, do. In the beginning of 2022, right? <laughs> In February. It's, it's two months later, but uh, let's talk about the Zealot game from Jethro Tull. Uh, when I was doing my Jethro Tull show last year, like around what, December maybe? Was it? November? Um, this, this album had already been... Uh, discussed. It had already been like, hey, uh, Jethro Tull's coming out with an album in February. It's called The Zealot Game. Um, the album before this was like the Jethro Tull Christmas album from fucking decades ago, you know? So this is, it's been a long time since Jethro Tull, the entity, has uh, put out an album. So, um,. I know I looked at it and I was like, well, Martin Barr's not on it. I guess Martin Barr's not really in Jethro Tull anymore, of course. <clears throat> this is kind of like the Jethro Tull touring band that, that Ian Anderson was toting around the last time Tull went out on the road. Um, so th when this album was coming, I was like, eh. I remember like right in February, I was like, oh yeah, that Tull album's going to drop. And I was like, ugh. I don't know why. I was a little, like, apprehensive. So I got it, and the first couple of times I listened to it, I was like, ah, it's all right. But then as I started listening, I think about the third or fourth time I listened to this album, and I wanted to fucking listen to this album, and that was the cool thing is, like, typically all this new music that comes out, usually I'll run it a couple of times, and nothing really, like, catches me. I'll just kind of like, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, but there's those certain albums that come out where you're just like, oh. <laughs> oh, let me hear that again. Oh, let me hear that again. And uh, and that doesn't happen for me very often uh, with new music. The old shit, of course, man, I'll put it on. I'll fucking play it. This morning I was playing fucking Aldo Nova. <laughs> I played his first album, and then I played his second one, Subject Aldo Nova. I need a monkey on my back. <laughs> you gonna be an asshole? Really? I'm singing. <laughs> Everybody's a critic, right? <laughs> I was jamming some Aldo Nova today. <laughs> you know, this is, that's how my day comes out. It's like, oh, what, what am I going to listen to? I have so much fucking music on my computer. I just go, oh, what? What? Let's try this, you know. So, uh, so I remember I bought the Zella game, and I was like, "All right, let's see what this is." Wow, it's fucking great. It really is. But it's you know, it's Ian Anderson. I, I don't know that you call this Jethro Tull, but I guess so. <laughs> it's Ian Anderson. You know, but it's Jethro Tull. It's toted as Jethro Tull, so we're gonna call it Jethro Tull. Stop harassing me. Stop harassing me. Come on up. Come on up so we can see you. Come on. Step up here. Come on. Okay. My dog's being an asshole. Come on up here so you can say hi to everybody. Come on. Come on. No? Okay. The Zealot Game opens up with uh, Mrs. Tibbetts. Which is trippy, because when you listen to it, you're like, Mrs. Tibbetts, son, blah, blah, blah. It's Mrs. Tibbetts was 
uh, the name of the uh, the pilot of Enola Gay who dropped the bomb on Hir Hiroshima. Um, his mom was Mrs. Tibbet. So it's a song about fucking stop. Uh, it's a song about that, you know. Mrs. Tibbet's son is fucking killing everyone. Um, <laughs> goes into Jacob's Tales, which is really good. Uh, mine is the Mountain. Um, the Zelly game, the title track. Stop fucking look at my fucking leg, you psycho. Uh, Shoshana Sleeping is fucking good. Sad City Sisters is fucking good. Baron Beth, Wild Desert John is fucking good. The Betrayal of Joshua King. This is a fucking really good album. Uh, where did Saturday go? And the Fisherman of Ephesus. Um, are you going to come up here so we really can see you? Come here. Come here. Since you're my dog fucking will just sit here and lick my fucking knee, which is, ugh, it's like slow torture. Fucking hate that shit. Hey. Get over here. No, you gotta come on. I don't. Not being cooperative. Not being cooperative at all. <laughs> I just turned into the dodo from Alice in Wonderland. Jolly well have to push on ahead myself, right? Um, it's first rule of a caucus race. But what we chiefly need is a lizard with a ladder. Build, my lad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. The Zelly game. Fuck, it's good, man. Like I said, I popped it in, and I listened to it the first time, and I was like, eh, that was all right. But then something told me, like, Dude, listen again. Started listening again. Next thing I know, man, I've listened to it like four or five times in the span of like two days. And I was like, fuck, this is a good album. <laughs> I just sat in, you know, sometimes you just put the headphones on. You just kind of close your eyes and corner them, just fucking listen. And it was fucking great. The Zella game. Two thumbs up, man. Definitely. Six circles and eight stars and yellow moons and orange diamonds. <laughs> Um, definitely a fucking great album. Uh, de uh, totally unexpected. You know, when you when you get these legacy bands where they're like, hey, uh, you know, they're coming out with an album, you're just like, you kind of cringe because you're like, ooh, what's this going to be like? But this fucking Ian Anderson, you know, he doesn't really, fuck, he's had 20, almost 20 years, right, to get this shit together. So it was really fucking good, you know, definitely listen to that. Um, <clears throat> Let's do one that just came out. Do, do, do. How about Unlimited Love from the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Wow, is this album being promoted? <laughs> Every fucking link you click on, on fucking, uh, on the internet, a little fucking Red Hot Chili Pepper fucking neon sign comes up in the corner. It says, don't forget to buy Unlimited Love. <laughs> <clears throat> I bought this because I fucking love the Chili Peppers. I've got all their shit, so... Well, most of it. I think the last two albums I don't have, but, you know, someday I'll buy them. Um, this fucking album, it has a shitload of songs. It has 17 fucking songs on it. Um, I started listening to it, and the first thing that I noticed is, like, Anthony Kiedis, like, he doesn't say any bad words, which you're like... Hmm, what? <laughs> so, I mean, the whole point of, like, the Red Hot Chili Peppers is they were always kind of a little dirty and then kind of, you know, and then fucking slap bass, fucking awesomeness flea, and then uh, John Fushante is back on the, right? He's back in the band, so this is kind of like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like reunion. It's kind of like the blood, sugar, sex, magic, you know, um, which is my favorite. Oof! Bow, 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 bow. I fucking love that riff. It's fucking great. Oh, anyways, 
Um, Unlimited Love, man. It's got fucking uh, the singles Black Summer. It's a cool song. Um, Here Ever After, I like. Aquatic Mouth Dance is fucking cool. Poster Child. Uh, She's a Lover. These Are the Ways. What You Thinking, which is funny because he doesn't really say that in the fucking song. Um, Bastards of Light, White Braids, and Pillow Chair, and One Way Traffic. Those are my favorite songs. Uh, those are songs that I go, oh, the fuck yeah. Uh, the cool thing about this is, is like, um, with John back in the band, and then Flea, like, dude, these guys just play off each other, so, dude, it'll start off mellow, and then it goes to another fucking dimension, and it's just fucking all over the place. Anthony Kiedis has got his fucking weird, wacky lyrics. Um, I was talking to Matt, the metal god, and he was like, you know, Anthony Kiedis hasn't had anything to say since, like, 1990. And I was like, yeah, probably not. But, um, like I said, it's very PG. I don't know. I felt like, is this the Chili Peppers album because they all have kids now, so they don't say outlandish shit? Or, you know... Are they just trying to be tame so they can sell a bunch of stadium seats? Because, you know, they're going on a stadium tour, basically, for this album. And that was shocking to me, too, is, like, I remember when I heard about that, and I was like, were the Chili Peppers ever a fucking stadium band? But I guess nowadays, you know, they are. Um, but I can certainly tell you, like, ten years ago, or however many years ago, Jesus. Um, they certainly weren't a fucking stadium band, you know. I saw them, fuck. I fucking saw Nirvana open for them at, like, the fucking, I want to say it was at the San Diego Fair. <laughs> the fucking, the fair. Um, what, 90? I know Nirvana opened for them, and then, like, they headlined, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was at the fair. Um I just I, I just never pictured them as as a like a fucking stadium band. Stadium bands are like Metallica and Guns N' Roses. But the funny thing is, is if you look, and I never really looked until like recently, because I was kind of mystified by them doing a fucking stadium tour. But people are so jonesing for fucking, you know, fucking music that, you know, they'll go pay stadium tour prices. What? You're annoying? What? Are you going to come up here so everybody can see you? See you an asshole? You're like, come on. Come on. Nope. He usually just, like, jumps up here and stuff. Come, why are you being shy? <clears throat> Um, but when you look, like, man, the Peppers have sold some fucking albums, you know, there's, there's a couple albums where they sold, like, 7 million copies in America, so, you're scratching the fuck out of me, come on, come on, come on, get up here, come on, come on, anyway, <clears throat> are you gonna, what are you gonna do, you're just gonna stare at me? Yeah. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. Get up. Come on. There we go. Say hello to everybody. Say hello to everybody. We're going to say hello to everybody. Look. Look. What's this? Say, say hello. This is my dog, Logan. He's a butthole. Huh. You did your butthole. Okay. Did you tell me a secret? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, Peppers have sold some fucking albums, you know, you don't realize it, like, they would have, like, a platinum album, and then the next one would go five times platinum, and then they'd have, like, a platinum album, and then they would go five times platinum, kind of, you know, a Billy Joel kind of thing, Ooh. I know, what are you doing, are you gonna say hi, you're such a, you're such a, you're so annoying, you know that, you are, you're so annoying, what you doing? 
<clears throat> um, it's a decent album. Um, I don't mind listening to it. In fact, I've listened to it a couple times now. There's a lot of fucking songs, though. 17 songs is a lot. Um, I'd say I mean, they probably chopped that in half. Um, that album is flawless. <laughs> and then, like, you know, if they chopped it in half. 17 songs. I like about eight of them. All right. I like about nine songs. Huh? I mean, the other songs, they're all right, but they're nothing stellar, you know. It just, it sounds like the Chili Peppers. So, you know, it's always fun. I don't mind the Chili Peppers. I, I went back and listened to all the early, early shit where they do, like, Yurtle the Turtle. <laughs> I'm going to, Anthony King is, I'm going to wrap, like, uh, this Dr. Seuss book while you guys play and we'll call it Yurtle the Turtle. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, like the early, early shit. First album, maybe like, yeah. <gasps> what? But uh, it's a cool album. It's not fucking amazing, but it's pretty fun. And it's good that John's back in the band. So it makes it more interesting. What? 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 Are you getting, oh, you're getting brave. Are you getting brave? Are you getting brave? You getting brave up here? You really don't. You really don't need to be up here. Yeah, you really don't. You really don't. Yeah, you really don't. Yeah. Okay. Are we gonna do this one? What's the next one we're gonna do? We're gonna do scorpions. We just need Pook to wake up, and then we'll have Pook in here too. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Get down. Get down. Okay. That's it. Yeah, all right, the next one, um, and I was kind of not looking forward to this one, but I saw it, and then I was like, all right, I knew it was coming out. I mentioned it on one of my shows. I think I mentioned it on my Scorpion show. Um, uh, Scorpion's Rock Believer came out. Um, when did Rock Believer come out? Like a, like a month ago, right? I want to say it was a month ago. So, I get Rock Believer. It's got that cover with the chick putting her hand on. She's going like this. She's got, like, this red veil on her face. And she's got, like, like a little scorpion tattooed on her tongue, which I'm sure is CGI'd. But anyways, um, <laughs> I got this album, and they had, like, the super deluxe version. And the super deluxe version has five extra songs, right? These two. Yeah. So it's 11 songs on the regular album, and then uh, just two is five extra songs. What are you doing? You need to go outside? Woo! I had to get rid of the dog. He needs to go outside. He's being annoying. Anyways, uh, so fuck yeah. I get the Scorpions. I see it. I'm like, eh. It's like an extra couple of bucks. You got the deluxe edition. Um, <clears throat> and I, I popped it on, man. <laughs> and at first I was like, Ooh, am I ready for a new Scorpions album? It's been a while. What well, return to forever was a while ago, right? Like what? Like fucking 2015 or something. Has it been that long? Rock Believer. So I bought this album. I started listening through it, and then I was like, mm, mm, mm. a lot of stuff from the past because that's kind of what they write, you know. A lot of borrowed stuff from older songs. <laughs> I started listening to it. And I started really getting into it about the title track, Rock Believer, which is song number four. Um. And then Shining Your Soul, and then Seventh Sun, not Sun, S O N, but S U N, Seventh Sun. Um, and I was like, I really dug those songs. And then, uh, but there was like the opening track is called Gas in the Tank. You know, it's like, oh, we got the gas in the tank. 
think? Are we still rocking? Yeah, we're 85 fucking years old, but are we still fucking rocking? And at first I was like, I wanted to hate that song. And then the second or third time I heard it, I was like, it's a good song. It starts off with like, I, I kept waiting for him to go one, two, a one, two, three, four, can't live, can't live without you. You know, that's what I was waiting for because the riff in that mm, sounds very familiar, right? <clears throat> And then the second song is called Roots in My Boots, and I wanted to hate that song too, but like, dude, it's fun. And that's what I kind of fucking figured out after, like, the first time I listened to the whole thing all the way through. Um, I, I was like, wait a second, let me go listen to that first and second song again. And then I was like, mm, this is really fucking good. <laughs> Klaus fucking sounds amazing. He sounds like amazing. The only thing from disc two that I thought was awesome was like Unleash the Beast. Um, the other stuff, it's just typical Scorpions fodder. Not terrible, but not amazing. You know, just you know, shoot for your heart and shit like that. Uh, Call of the Wild was a really good song, and then uh, When You Know Where You Come From, that was a cool song too. Um, I listened to it a couple times, kind of like with the Chili Peppers albums, kind of like with the Jeff Wartell album, it was like, I was pleasantly surprised. So, three really pretty decent fucking albums from these bands. Um, I was like, yeah, I fucking dug it. So, um, yeah, and I guess they're touring or they're fucking doing a residency, I think. I saw it on Eddie Trunk. He always posts shit like that. Uh, doing like a residency in like Vegas or something. Um, not really running out to see the Scorpions. But at the same time, uh, this is a pretty fucking solid album. <clears throat> Klaus sounds fucking amazing. He does. He sounds really good. So, um, Rock Believer. Who'd have thought? Really fucking strong album from the Scorpions. Uh, get it. It's fucking cool, man. I fucking dug it. Um, what's the other one that I was going to talk about? Oh, Doom Crew, Inc. From fucking Black Label Society. Uh, Ozzy just announced via Twitter. Well, of course, he has to post a picture of him wearing fucking, like, you know, church fucking robes. That he's done with his new album. So, I don't know what that means. Um, but it's got Zach on it. I guess Zach plays on the album. I don't know how much Zach plays on the album, but I'm pretty sure I was getting the vibe that Zach actually plays on the fucking album. So, that'll be cool. <coughs> uh, I heard Rob Trujillo is on the album. And Rob's played with fucking Ozzy before, so... Um, and then... I don't know. I heard fucking... Uh, what? Chad Smith from the Chili Quavers is the drummer again. But also, uh, there's supposed to be some songs with Taylor Hawkins. Uh, I think there was supposed to be some more Duff McKagan songs on here, too. I don't know. Um, there's a million fucking people on this album. Andrew Watts producing again, but I guess he doesn't play guitar. Thank God. Because <clears throat> he's fucking terrible. Um, I saw that kind of announcement that Ozzy did. It kind of made me think back to, uh, the fucking Doom Inc. Doom Crew Inc. from last year that got released, like, kind of towards the end of the year. So, um, right? I don't fucking know. We'll look it up. It'll be right fucking there. Um, but I'm not looking really forward to the new Ozzy album. It has fucking like Eric Clapton on it. It has Jeff Beck on it. It has Tony Iommi on it. Um, like I said, it has Taylor Hawkins posthumous release. And we just lost Taylor a couple weeks ago, uh, unfortunately. Just lost Gilbert Godfrey the other day, too. Kind of sucks. 
All our heroes are dying off. Taylor Hawkins, uh, what a great drummer, fun guy. Everybody fucking loved him. Unfortunately, he had a fucking nasty ass drug problem. Um, and that fucking killed his ass. Uh, I don't, I, you know, the, <laughs> I don't know the guy personally and neither do you. So don't get fucking alarmed. But you know, the thing is with me, it's like, oh fuck. It was shocking, man. It was like, oh fuck. Taylor Hawkins is dead. What? They're in tour in like South America. And it's like, oh fuck. Taylor Hawkins is dead. Um, and you're like, what What the fuck happened? Did he get in a fucking, <clears throat> get in a car accident in Paraguay? Did the plane go down in the Andes and they had to eat each other? You know, like, what the fuck happened? And then you're like, oh, he fucking OD'd in his fucking hotel room. Oh. Okay. And people are like, well, you know, just because you had problems doesn't mean you should talk shit about... I'm not talking shit about Taylor Hawkins. I'm talking shit about everybody else. Because, obviously, he's fucking doing heroin and shit still. And, you know, you as his friends, Dave Grohl, um, nobody, nobody saw that shit. Nobody was like, hey, dude, like, what the fuck? Let's get you help. No, nobody saw that shit. It's just mystifying. You know, the guy was 50. He's two years younger than me. <clears throat> but the fucking drug cocktail they found in his fucking system, you know, people are like, well, you know, dude, no, fuck no, dude. This guy had so much shit in him from so many different fucking substances. He was like just fucking, you know, just junking himself up with whatever fuck he could get his hands on. And that is like the fucking... Uh, Act of a fucking desperate drug addict right there. You know, you don't just walk around and just pour shit into your body like 50 different things every fucking day uh, unless you have a serious fucking drug problem. So it kind of sucks. Everybody's like, oh, Taylor was such a nice guy. That's cool, man. I know he was. I fucking saw interviews with him, and the guy was just a fucking fun dude. But at the same time, he was a fucking full-blown fucking drug addict. And it just hurts my heart to see people around him that could have fucking lent a hand. Now, I know people will say, well, dude, you can't, you know, change a drug addict. You can't fucking, uh, you know, it's a disease and you can't. Well, you could fucking lend a hand and you could also, you know, Dave Grohl, who was like best friends with him. Dude, he already went through that shit with Kurt and now he's fucking, now he's dealing with it. With fucking Taylor, um, there are things you could do to fucking put, set people on the right track. You know, like, dude, go get your shit cleaned up or you're fucking out of the band. You know, if you love somebody, you got to make some tough decisions. So that sucks. But anyways, I hate going off on tangents, but I had to throw out my piece there. I'm not condemning fucking Taylor Hawkins. You know, I'm just saying, like, I wish the people around him would have fucking intervened to fucking help that man out before he fucking basically killed himself. So, um, but he's going to be on the new Ozzy album. So, Ozzy's sitting there announcing, yeah, I'm coming out with this fucking album. So, it kind of made me remember fucking uh, the Doom Crew Inc. fucking Black Label Society album. I remember getting that, and fuck, that's a fucking... I always kind of love the Black Label stuff, because I love Zach, because Zach's just, like, that guy that's just so passionate about everything he does. Such a great guitar player, and he's such a great fucking singer. Just a great musician, and he's very, very fucking passionate about uh, everything he does. So, um, Doom Crew, Inc., when the fuck did that come out? I'm going to check it real quick. A dirty monkey. Listen to Aldo Nova this morning. <clears throat> With that monkey on my back. I watch the Aldo Nova videos, especially Fantasy, where he comes rolling out in that cheetah print spandex outfit. Aldo Nova's one of those guys that, like, he probably should have been this huge fucking star. 
Because he can fucking sing just like Zach. He can fucking sing and he can fucking play guitar, man. And when you listen to some of his albums, man, that guy was fucking wailing. Not only on guitar, but like he was a fucking good vocalist. But I think he just thought he was cooler than he was. <laughs> Do Crew Inc. It was released on November 26th. Doom Crew Inc. <clears throat> Destroy and Conquer. It's a heavy fucking album. Of course, it's fucking Black Label Society. So it's like a mix between, you know, Black Sabbath and Zack. <laughs> so there are songs on here that are fucking mauling. Um, and I like that. I like that about fucking uh, Black Label Society. Uh, Destroying Cocker is fucking great. Um, End of Days, Ruins. Um, fucking the last four songs of this album are fucking great. Uh, Gospel of Lies, Shelter Me, Gather All My Sins, and Farewell Ballad. <laughs> so there's 12 songs. I like about a little bit more than half. All right, 12, a little bit more. I love seven songs. They're fucking great. Um, Doom Crew Inc. Or Incorporated, as you want to say. Fucking great album. One of those newer albums. Just came out at the end of last year. I fucking, uh, somebody fucking told me, dude, you got to get that new Mastodon album. And so I got that, that Hushed and Grim album. And I gotta tell you, like, I'm not a huge Mastodon fan because it's just so unmemorable to me. It really is. So unmemorable. Like, every once in a while, I'll just, like, I'll just fucking snatch up, like, a fucking new metal album, you know, and I'll just be like, ooh, yeah, let's, like, fucking dig on that. Like, I got into that All, uh, all That Remains. Because, like, I found a bunch of their albums. They were, like, super cheap on Amazon. So I'm like, oh, I'll just look, fucking check these guys out. And they're cool. They got some cool shit. But after a while, man, it's just like, you know, there's nothing memorable. Um, I've really been into Gojira lately. I picked up a couple of their albums because they had a bunch of albums on sale on Amazon. I was like, ooh, Gojira. Gojira. Godzilla. Gojira. You know, um, I got from Mars to Sirius, uh, that's a fucking trippy, fucking awesome, fucking cool album, um, and then The Way of All Flesh from 2008, uh, it's pretty fucking cool, um, my next show I'm probably gonna do, um, I kind of had this idea, like, because I've been listening to, like, all the shredders that kind of, you know, I grew up with in the 80s. They're all still coming out with albums, and I kind of listen to them, and then I, like, some of them are, like, cool, and some of them are, like, meh. And um, I started thinking about it, and I'll probably do it on my next episode. Um, what would have happened if... Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Ingve Momsteed, or Tony McAlpine had actually, like, steered themselves a little to one side and how big they could have been. Because now I look at these guys. I was just listening to a new Joe Satriani album, The Elephants of Mars. And I was just thinking aloud. I know he was in Chicken Foot for a while with Sammy Hager, but that never really did much. Um, I mean, Joe Satriani, here's a guy, he played with Deep Purple. When Blackmore left, he finished the tour for them. He played on an Alice Cooper album. I mean, he played with Sammy Hagar. I mean, I'm going to go over that, but I'll, I'll do that on my next episode, so look forward to that. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to leave fucking comments uh otherwise 
my Camp Crystal Lake shirt. And it says, <laughs> it says, uh, counselor on the back. See my big fat head. It says counselor. <laughs> Somebody actually stopped me the other day and go, oh, are you, are you a counselor? And I'm like, yeah, at Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> We're all having sex while Jason Voorhees was drowning in the lake. <coughs> Early morning, yeah. Everybody stay metal. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Matt's Metal Show.